This is an interview with Dr. George Meinig from Ojai, California on root canals and the history of the research into the dangers of root canals. Dr. Meinig. Thank, thank you. Things I'm going to tell you uh, make it necessary for, to give, for me to give you a little of my background because you're not going to quite believe uh, <laughs> with my background that, that I'm talking about the things that we will be mentioning to you about how teeth are very often always infected and particularly when they've had root canal treatment. And so uh, as to my background, uh, I was very fortunate as a dental student to be in a school in which Dr. Edgar Coolidge, the foremost research specialist uh, in the world on root canal therapy, uh, was our professor. Uh, I en ended up, after I was out of school in the first year, uh, having him ask me, along with five other uh, dentists from our school, to be members of his study group. And as such, uh, he gave us postgraduate training in root canal therapy. Mind you, this was at a time when there wasn't even a school teaching root canal therapy. It was just a, a professor or a teacher uh, who was involved in these different uh, schools, uh, and not all schools had a department in root canal therapy uh, who were doing these things. At any rate, uh, I had that background with him and uh, could have gone into root canal therapy as a specialist uh, but I didn't want to give up the other things in dentistry, so I continued doing both. As an outgrowth of that, I was one of 19 dentists that got together and started the Root Canal Association. And this was back in 1943, if I remember the year correctly. And uh, since then, uh, it has grown from us, from the 19 of us, to the fact that they now have 5,000 members uh, who are uh, members of the Root Canal Association. It is now called the American Association of Endodontics. Uh, Trevor has asked me to mention some things that are involved about this whole business of root canal filled teeth. And this uh, didn't start out because of root canal filled teeth. It started out because of infections that occur in teeth. And really most of this is, is deals back to the early 1900s when uh, uh, Frank Billings introduced the focal infection theory in 1904. And that focal infection theory meant, merely meant that if you had an infection somewhere in the body and the bacteria that were transferred from the, that infected area to another gland, tissue, or organ, that this uh, uh, would then set up a whole new infection and these could lead to other types of disease and so on. Well, what they discovered mostly around World War I days, but it started out in the early 1900s, so, uh, was the fact that, that they found uh, teeth that have had root canals always remained infected no matter how good they looked or how good they felt. And so the question that you would like to know is what happened that made that so? And uh, unfortunately, the, the three scientists who did the vast majority of research on this subject, there were many more than the three, but th those three were Frank Billings, who introduced the focal infection theory. Secondly was E.C. Rosenau, who was the world's premier bacteriologist uh, at the time, and uh, the other was Weston Price, a dentist who was a specialist in dental research. And he had been doing a lot of dental research, but uh, what we uh, didn't learn immediately because the two books that he had documented as his research about uh, dental focal infections was all uh, buried in the archives of, of the foundation that has his research data. And we didn't learn about that until 1993. And so, uh, but nevertheless, he was doing all of this research 
from 1900 on through into the 30s. And so what he found were a number of interesting things. And one of the most interesting ones was that he had a patient in which he did a root canal for, who was a woman who did uh, sewing of, of various fancy kinds of, of, of things for Marsha Fields in Chicago and for other wealthy people and so on. And what, uh, what he did, uh, he, he found that, that he had done a, a root canal for her, this woman, and she developed a severe arthritis in her hands, in her ankles, in her wrists, and her elbows. And she became so crippled with arthritis from this uh, infection that uh, she was bedridden most of the time, could get around only with, a, uh, with, with a, uh, crutches and a wheelchair and that sort of thing. Uh, what what happened here was that Price had learned from uh, Frank Billings, Dr. Billings, and Dr. Rosenau that uh, these focal infections uh, infected teeth uh, very severely, and that this could be a problem of causing uh, numbers of different kinds of degenerative diseases, and so. Uh, what he did, he finally convinced this woman that he, she should let him remove this root canal filled tooth that he had done for her, even though it looked very fine on x-ray and she had no symptoms of any kind from the tooth, and of course didn't want to lose the tooth, he said he thought that there were some things there that they could show that would prove that her joint swellings in, in her hands and, and, and ankles and so on were due to this infection from that tooth, even though it looked all right. And so what he, she finally consented, and one morning he removed uh, that tooth for her, and uh, a after he uh, removed, uh, sent her on her way for the day, uh, he uh, then uh, uh, took that extracted tooth, and he had secured a laboratory animal, in this case it was a rabbit, and he made a now he, he, he took this rabbit and, and he made an incision in the back of the neck of the rabbit, this is the smallest incision here, and he took that extracted tooth and he implanted it in that incision area in the back of the neck. And, and he put a couple of stitches in so the tooth wouldn't fall out. And he put the rabbit back in its spacious cage that had plenty of good food and water and awaited developments. Well, it didn't take very long. In just three days' time, that rabbit developed the same swelling in its limbs, uh, as you can see here, uh, that the patient had in her uh, wrists and ankles and, and, and hips and so on. And so, uh, and, and along with that, that happened in three days, and 10 days later, that rabbit passed away because of the infection that was in the tooth. Well, interestingly enough, with the passing of the rabbit, the uh, infection in her, in her wrists and ankles and hands and so on began to disappear. And within uh, a couple of months, uh, she was up walking again and, and getting along uh, quite well. Now, when people heard about prices uh, implanting teeth under the skin of, of an animal and then having that animal get the various diseases that the patient may have had, uh, they said, oh, well, you implant any tooth under the skin of an animal and it will cause them to be uh, uh, sick and die. Well, uh, to prove uh, that that wasn't so, uh, Price took a number of teeth that were normally healthy teeth, 
These were teeth that were removed for orthodontic purposes, teeth that were impacted, teeth that weren't infected in any way. And he would implant those teeth under the skin of an animal. And he didn't just use rabbits, he used all kinds of different animals. And what he found was not a thing happened to the animals because nothing happened around them. And this is a, a case of, of a tooth that was implanted under the skin of an animal. And you can see there was no changes in this tissue around here. It looked all perfectly normal. He also took various other things like coins, pieces of glass, and so on that were sterile. And, and he implanted those under the skin uh, of an animal and nothing happened to the animals from those. And so this showed that, that it was the infection in the tooth that was the problem that was causing the pro the, the, these difficulties for patients. Well, this has become so strong because what we now know is that every root canal filled tooth still has uh, infection in it, which is being released into the patient's body 24 hours a day, day after day, week after week, year after year. And eventually, even if they've got a good immune system to start, eventually they come down with a degenerative disease. Now, Dr. Rosenau did, by 1915, had discovered some research, uh, a lot of research as a matter of fact, in which he was able to demonstrate 137 different degenerative diseases that were traceable to infections coming from teeth and teeth of jaws or infections in the mouth. In other words, oral infections. And so uh, it's imperative that everybody realize, and particularly people working with, with, with the people who have root canal filled teeth, that those patients may be suffering from a wide variety of diseases uh, unbeknownst to them that are related uh, to the fact that they have a root canal. And so then the question is, how is that so? And the reason for that is that getting into the anatomy of a tooth. Uh, hand me that, uh, thank you. Uh, the anatomy of a tooth meaning, means its structure. And if we look at the tooth, everybody knows that the enamel is the hard outer covering of the, of the tooth. Uh, and not too many know that the root has a hard outer calcium covering, which is called cementum. But all of the rest of that tooth, what you see here, is called dentin. And that dentin is almost as hard as enamel. And yet, strangely enough, it is not a solid material, but is made up of little tiny tubules. Those tubules are so small that if you took your smallest front tooth, which would be the equivalent of about half of that, and, and took all each tubule out and attached it end to end and stretched it as far as it would go, that those tubules would go for a distance of three miles. It's hard to imagine you can have that kind of, of tubules inside a tooth. But what's the important of the tubules is that they an, contain a fluid. And that fluid that they contain contains nutriments. Now those nutriments come from the artery that comes into the tooth. Now I didn't mention, but the inside of the tooth has a root canal and a pulp chamber here. And that in that root canal, everybody knows there's a nerve, but not too many people know there's also an, an artery and a vein and other tissue as well. These tubules, as we stated, can carry a fluid, and that fluid comes from the uh, nutriments, and, and this fluid contains nutriments, which come from the artery that comes inside the center of the tooth, the root canal of the tooth. And uh, the artery drops off nutriments in those tubules, the same as it drops off nutriments to every cell of the body, uh, all through the body. Now, it's those nutriments in those tubules and the fluid movement in them that travels to all parts of the tooth. And in traveling to all parts of the tooth, that is what keeps teeth alive and healthy. Now, uh, this is a very important facet because in actuality, uh, when a tooth becomes infected, I guess, yeah, we'll use this one. 
see that? Okay. When a tooth becomes infected by decay, it always starts out of a little cavity, and eventually it gets to be a bigger and bigger cavity. Once the decay, which is caused partly by bacteria, it gets into this root canal and travels down the root canal, those bacteria that are involved spy the dentin tubules which come right, start right at the edge of that root canal, and of course they find that a delightful place to live. And all, besides, it's got all these luscious nutrients in there to live on. And so the bacteria then cause an infection in there, which eventually causes an abscess at the end of the root of the tooth. These don't always show up in every case, even though the tooth is infected. It can look perfectly normal and still be infected uh, as badly as this, but not be visible. <clears throat> Dr. Price now did lots of research in numbers of different ways. And what he did, he made some cross-section cuts of teeth in which he, he photographed them under the best microscope that was available to him at that time. And that was uh, during World War I days. And, and uh, uh, this was the uh, photograph that he got. Well, uh, when you look here, this is, uh, was the high power photograph under the microscope. And you see the decay breaking into the dentin uh, tubules here and traveling down it. Uh, but that wasn't very clear to anything. So he did a high magnification study and under high magnification, here are the tubules uh, that you see right here. And when you look very closely, you see those little black dots. Well, those little black dots are the bacteria or microbes that are inside the tubules. This was the first time anybody ever showed a picture of what was going on inside the structure of a tooth. And uh, Price's picture uh, was eventually pictured in his two books uh, in which he documented his 25 years of root canal study research and this was the first time that appeared. Now let me show you now uh, a modern electronic uh, view. Uh, this, was in, uh, uh, this is increased in size by 1,210 times much higher than the average microscope could do. And here you see the tubules cut in cross-section. And you see it's quite a good sized hole when you see them increased in size by 1,200 times. And so uh, that gives you a good chance to see what a tubule really looks like uh, when it's enlarged. But here you see the tubules are not all lined up like you saw in that original picture on the tooth because that's the way the artist pictured the tubules would be. And he didn't know that actually they intermingle with one another just the same as you see it here. Now it's that intermingling with one another that gives uh, the dentin structure of the tooth its hardness. It's hard to imagine that even though those are tubules that contain fluid, that this substance, when a dentist cuts on a tooth, through the enamel, once he gets through the enamel and into this dentin, it sounds just like he's cutting on a hard stone. And yet, it's, it's hard for people to picture, you can have these two things, a tubule with fluid in it, and still have that structure so hard that that would be so. At any rate, uh, this is why these, these infections are so dangerous. Now, it's often said that, that these bacteria that are in these tubules are locked in the tubules. But really, they aren't locked in there because every tooth has lateral accessory canals in them. And these are additional root canals, small ones, that do not show up on x-ray pictures. But every dentist knows that, that most teeth have uh, several of these uh, accessory canals. Now, any of these tubules that are in the neighborhood of those accessory canals, the bacteria that are here could escape into those accessory canals. Well, the accessory canals end up uh, being uh, 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 going into the outer covering of the root of the tooth, which is the cementum, 
and just before the cementum into the periodontal membrane. That is a hard fibrous tissue which holds the tooth in the socket. It attaches to the root of the tooth and it attaches to the jaw bone. And it's a very tough fibrous tissue, but it has a good blood supply. And so, of course, as the bacteria get into that tissue with a good blood supply, it infects it just the same as it's infected the tooth. And so uh, that happens. And from there, it's just an easy going into the jawbone that surrounds, the, that holds the tooth in the socket. And that jawbone has a, has a blood supply, and that blood supply uh, now becomes infected as well. And so these bacteria now are traveling all over the body searching for another place to live and what they usually do is they find some place that's already been injured or diseased before but they can start with any tissue that they happen to like and set up a whole new infection and as an outgrowth of that uh, as we mentioned uh, Rosenau found there was over 137 degenerative diseases like heart disease, kidney trouble, bone thing, problems, brain problems, all kinds of diseases uh, have been traced to teeth. And so here we have one of the causes for the most number of illnesses that have ever been discovered happen to be coming from infections that are present in teeth and jaws. And so that's what this is all about today. And, and this is why we're getting, you, getting to you an introduction of what is happening in the mouth and why it's so important to people's health that they eliminate any dental infections of any kind. Okay. We're going to repeat again because it, that it's hard to think through to us that root canal teeth always remain infected uh, no matter how good they look or how good they feel. And so uh, we want to bring that out and in order to emphasize that this happened with other things other than arthritis and uh, here we see uh, some uh, uh, cases of infections of different tissues uh, uh, in this case uh, there was a infected tooth here and there was actually two or three others in this patient's mouth uh, and this patient had an infected uh, heart myocarditis as a matter of fact and uh, what happened is that when the these extracted infected teeth were implanted under the skin of an animal the animal got this infection of the heart that the same infection that the patient doctors had found that, that she had had and so uh, uh, this, that covered some of the heart cases that happened and there were all kinds of different ones and here we have a bladder infection and bladder infections are rather frequent in many people and not too many connect them uh, with the fact that they've got a, a root canal filled tooth or an infection in their mouth and in this case uh, there was a perforation of the bladder uh, at, at this point and uh, uh, that is why that picture is shown. Now this is another bladder case, an entirely different one uh, that showed up in another animal uh, from a tooth that had come from a patient who had a bladder infection and this one you can see how vastly enlarged uh, is the, uh, are the cells of the bladder uh, from that infection. and so. Uh, you're, you're getting a chance to see that these infections uh, involve uh, all kinds of different disease entities uh, for people. There's one disease that ha we haven't mentioned and that is cancer. Not too many people get cancers in the mouth but many, a fair number do. And uh, <coughs> uh, one of the key people of this with Dr. Joseph Issels who had his own cancer hospital in Germany for 30 years in which he treated terminal cancer cases and he had two uh, things that he insisted on with every cancer patient and that is that they had no infections in their mouths or they had no toxic materials like mercury or other things there because if they did have he couldn't get cures 
and he had the best cure rate for cancer of any physician in any hospital in the state of, uh, in the country of uh, Germany. Uh, Now actually, here are three different cases of cancer of the mouth. This one is around this tooth. This is a large infected area. It looks like a typical abscess infection around the tooth, but this one happens to be malignant. And so does the area around these three teeth here that also uh, turned out to be cancerous. And this is a wisdom tooth area where the tooth had been extracted some time previous and that became cancerous. Well. It's important that people know that this can happen and dentists that are doing these extractions now do biopsies and have them tested by a noted uh, doctor in, in finding out what kind of bacteria or microbes are involved and whether there are malignancies involved. And this sign says, there's nothing so powerful as the truth and often nothing so strange. And that was a statement by Daniel Webster many, many years ago, and it certainly applies uh, to these uh, dental infections. Next, I would like to mention some things about what are called cavitations. A cavitation is an infection in the jawbone. To explain it, if you have a cavity in a tooth, you know that that's a hole in the tooth. Well, a cavitation in the jawbone is a hole in the jawbone. It's just called a cavitation instead of a cavity but because it's a slightly different type of thing than having happened in the tooth. Now here's a very large cavitation that has occurred in the wisdom tooth area and this is where the wisdom tooth was and you see this large dark black hole that's full of dead bone cells. Well it actually extends clear out to here and clear out to here. These are all dead bone cells uh, spreading around. Now we have found by research that of all the people who have had their wisdom teeth removed, for instance, 94% of them still have infections present in their jawbone that are similar to this. Now they may not be this big or this extensive as yet, but they are present. In order to see these by x-ray pictures, we need what is called a Panorex x-ray. Uh, to see them, and they are not e easy to see in the beginning. Uh, they are not as easy as seeing infections at the end of the root of a tooth. And so, uh, cavitations are very profound and they, they are present almost anywhere where people have previously had a tooth extraction, but they can be present for other reasons as well. And this is another form of infection in the mouth which uh, can be uh, contributing to degenerative diseases of the patient as well as uh, uh, those that come from teeth themselves or from tonsils or other forms of infection in the jaws. Oh, uh, now, I, I think this has given you a, a, a rather hurried background of what this subject is about. Uh, I, of course, suggest that people read my book, Root Canal Cover-Up, because I covered uh, most of these things uh, and the research involved in them in that book. And I did that in order to get not only the lay public acquainted with these things, but physicians and dentists as well, because most physicians and dentists know nothing about what we're talking about here today. Thank you very much, Dr. Meinig. I appreciate your time, and I hope that as a result, this will help many people overcome many of their health problems in life. Thank you for inviting me to say a few words to you today. Thank you, Dr. Meinig.